test RFC 2544 logic over any classic or virtual topology in any combination. For example, throughput over PPPoE over VPLS running on a virtual machine inside the DUT. Turbo iterations. Test throughput up to 100 times faster. Full metrics with every pass. True jitter. Real-time loss. Short-term average latency. No code automation. Add events in the middle of the test, such as route flapping. Internal DUT metrics. Pull internal DUT variables and trend with results visually. Layer 2 through 7, QoE and QoS. Measure QoS, QoE, and Layer 2 through 7 correlation in a single pass. In this video, I will show you how to set up an RFC 2544 test over an existing topology. So if we look at uh, what we currently have in our topology map, uh, you'll notice that we have two BGP routers, and sitting behind those routers, we've got stubs uh, containing hosts. So if we edit our links, we can see what the relationship is uh, with our host groups. So you can see that I have my West stub uh, sitting behind my router on my uh, 7.4 port. Likewise, on my 7.3 port, I've got a stub sitting behind a router as well. And you will also notice that currently our uh, BGP session is actually up and peered. So to perform an RFC 2544 test, what we're going to do is come over here to Wizards, and we're going to launch the RFC 2544 test package. Now, of course, you can always start with a, an existing config or with nothing configured, uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to pick uh, a frame loss test and then a throughput test. Notice we also support the RFC 5180 IPv6 benchmarking options as well. So from here, uh, we're going to pick both our 7.3 and 7.4 ports. You can, of course, pick as many ports as you would like. And uh, you're going to see that uh, we currently have devices already configured. At this point, if I wanted to add devices, I would just hit Add and then run through the wizard to set up my Layer 3 uh, devices. So what this is now going to do is it's going to present a device map. So we can pick either a full mesh, backbone, or pair. So in this particular case, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the east device going to the west device. And I'm going to make this a bidirectional test, and I'm going to add this. And I'll pick stream only generation because I want to do full uh, tracking in both directions. This allows me to set up basic test options including scheduling, staggered start, and delay after transmission, whether or not we do learning and how we do learning, how we measure latency, LILO, LIFO, or FIFO, and also if we do traffic uh, verification, which is the ability to send live traffic for a fixed duration of time. In addition, there's some additional value add that Spire Testnet gives you to be able to also simultaneously measure jitter. And also, I can save detailed stream results with every iteration. This allows me to go back and look at existing configs um, and results uh, and be able to do post-test correlations. So now I'm going to go to my throughput test, and I'm going to set my duration. Um, and Spire Tester also gives you an option to perform turbo iterations, which will help you accelerate your throughput testing by up to 100 times. Um, so we will go ahead and turn that on. And this is basically how you actually step through your load. So by default, we use a binary search algorithm, and we go through the entire range of loads from 1% up to 100%, starting at 10%, with a possible uh, error resolution of 1% packet loss. Additional value that Spine Test Center gives you is also the ability to look at maximum latency and out of sequence as part of the calculations here. Um, this is also where I can set up my frame sizes. So I'll set up a uh, specific size. In this case, we'll just do one. But I can have as many as I would like. Notice, too, I can also mix different iMix patterns. So if I wanted to add different patterns, I could add them in order and perform that test as well. This is now uh, configuring my frame loss test, exactly the same uh, type of configuration. I can type my list here as well. And in this particular case, I'm just going to do one load and one frame size. If you don't change any of the parameters, you'll do a standard RFC 2544 test. Okay, so when I hit finish, you'll notice that we actually build out our multiple tests uh, in the command sequencer. 
This would allow me to go in and if I edited the sequence I can drop in a, uh, up to 240 additional commands such as the ability to uh, you know start and stop BGP, go out launch uh, a script to configure my DUT, go ahead and pull results from my device under test. So you'll see on the graph that uh, we will actually show you when specific events are actually happening. And now I can look at any of my metrics. So here I'm starting to do some basic learning. So now I can look at jitter, I can look at short-term average latency, I can look at any one of the metrics you know, that are relevant to my, my test. So now I'm going to go ahead and add these to my chart. And I can zoom in and I can zoom out. In this particular case, I can even come and edit my chart. So if I wanted to, let's say, delete a series, I could do that. And notice I'm doing all of this live, too. So I'm actually walking through the actual algorithm. This is what tells you the trial, uh, frame size and load. come over to rates. And I could add this to the chart. And I could add the corresponding other port to the chart as well. And you can see we're walking through the algorithm. So this will actually tell you where you are actually in the algorithm. In this case, we're in the waiting step. This will tell you the duration. And again, at any point in time, I can look at any of the metrics in my test. And this includes things like rates and jitter count and real-time loss and short-term average latency and buffering, uh, you know, inside of the the, the test. Um, and this is nice because. Um, unlike other solutions where you basically get one or two results, with us you get the full range of, uh, of counters. Okay, so we're now starting to get into reporting. So this is launching the Spiron Test Center Results Reporter. And uh, what this is actually going to be doing is pulling all of the data up and parsing through that data to uh, be able to I can minimize windows, I can go back and look at my, my tests. So with Test Center you can see live results as well as post-test results. Now if I had put additional events into the command sequencer to let's say start and stop BGP or withdraw routes or you know bring down a VRF or bring down a PPPoE session um, then that would also be happening too. So that's one thing that makes Spiring Testener very unique in that you're, you can take the 2544 logic or 2889 logic or any other of the, the methodologies and apply them to your specific topology.